Welcome to 10.4, use inscribed angles and polygons. We are familiar with angles and let me remind you that this elbow in an angle is called the vertex, the vertex of an angle. But not only are we going to look at angles, we're also looking at polygons. Poly is many, many sided closed figure. But the modifier, our adjective here, is inscribed. So what is this inscribed angles and inscribed polygons talking about? Well, it's referring to angles and polygons that are inside of a circle. So our essential question is, how do I use inscribed angles of a circle? So we're kind of connecting what we know about angles and also about circles. And let's begin with the central angle or a central angle. When the vertex of an angle is at the center, at the center of a circle, we're going to call that a central angle. Here's your vertex and it spreads out here. This is a central angle of this circle. And I'll get to the inscribed angle in just a minute. But when this central angle comes out, think of these as hands that are coming out and are grabbing or intercepting this part of the circle that's on the inside here. And any portion of a circle is called an arc, A-R-C, arc. And so we're going to call this the intercepted arc, intercepted arc of this particular central angle. The central angle comes out and it intercepts, it grabs this part of the circle and so that is called the intercepted arc of this particular central angle. And notice that if I was to take a protractor and measure this ang the central angle here, it would be approximately, let's say, 120 degrees. So it is 120 degrees all the way around in a circle. But it's also true that it's 120, did I say 120 degrees? I did. It is 360 degrees all the way around this center. But it, it is also true that it is 360 degrees all the way around the circle. So we're going to speak of, we're familiar with, the measure of an angle being 120 degrees. Now we're going to talk about the measure of an arc, the measure of an arc, and the measure of the intercepted arc will always be the same as the measure of its central angle. So this 120 degree central angle creates this intercepted arc. The central angle is 120 degrees, therefore its intercepted arc is also 120 degrees. So we've connected those two concepts together. But now what we're going to do is take this vertex, and it's not going to be at the center anymore. We're going to shift it over here and put it on the circle. And when we do, when the vertex of an angle, and the yellow here, is on the circle, we're going to call that an inscribed angle. So now this is an inscribed angle. And notice this particular inscribed angle is creating the same intercepted arc. It's reaching out, grabbing this part of the circle, and this is the intercepted arc also of this inscribed angle. And we said that when, or that the intercepted arc of a particular central angle has the same measure as the central angle, but with an inscribed angle, it's going to be half of that. So in this case, the central angle is 120, therefore the intercepted arc, the measure of that is also 120 degrees. And the inscribed angle um, that creates this same intercepted arc, uh, the measure of that angle is going to be half of the measure of the intercepted arc. So 120 divided by 2 gives you 60. So that's what this little formula down here is. The inscribed angle in the yellow is always going to be half of the uh, what's it, what we say corresponding 
corresponding central angle that has the same points on the circle and also half of the intercepted arc of the inscribed angle. Let's look down here at this uh, theorem <clears throat> and notice that when you have, here's a, a, an angle whose vertex is on the circle and so therefore this and also this other one these are inscribed angles and notice that they have the same intercepted arc. The arc that is created by these inscribed angles is the same. And therefore, remember, whatever this, this measure is, let's say it's 80 degrees, I don't know what it is, but let's say it's 80 degrees. If, if the measure of the intercepted arc is 80 degrees, remember that your inscribed angle is going to be half of that, so this one would be 40. And because this inscribed angle has the same intercepted arc, therefore it will have the same measure. And therefore, these two inscribed angles, which have the same intercepted arc, these two inscribed angles will be congruent. And that's what we proved, or that's what we demonstrated uh, here in, uh, in class when we drew a diagram. And let me just see if I can represent that like this. So if you have your intercepted arc over here, then whether your vertex is on, no, 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 I won't say that. Um, now remember, the measure of the intercepted arc is the same as the measure of its central angle. But when I then pull the vertex over to the side, and now it's an inscribed angle, the measure of that, let me get this back here, the measure of that inscribed angle is going to be the same, whoop, can I do this, do I have enough coordination? Is going to be the same no matter where the vertex of that inscribed angle is on the circle. This angle, of my right finger here, <laughs> I can't point to it because all my fingers are being used, uh, this angle whoop, on the inscribed uh, or on the circle, the inscribed angle on the circle is going to be the same angle no matter where I put it on the circle. So let's take those principles and apply it to this situation. And what do we have here? Well, I do have an angle. This is a vertex. And where is that vertex? If the vertex was on the center, that would be called a central angle, but it's not. The vertex is on the circle, and so, so therefore this is an inscribed angle. And this inscribed angle comes out and creates this intercepted arc. And the measure of this intercepted arc is 90 degrees. And they want us to find the measure of the bolded arc, so, or bolded angle in this situation. So I want to find the measure of this inscribed angle. And you remember that the measure of the inscribed angle is half of the measure of the intercepted arc. So that's your answer. Just take half of that 90. Hey, if I was to create a, an, uh, a, or a central angle where the vertex was on the circle, so here's my central angle, and it creates this same intercepted arc, what would be the measure of this uh, central angle? Remember, it's the same as the measure of the intercepted arc, whereas the measure of the inscribed angle is half of its intercepted arc. Over here, in this case, we're doing the converse. This is a uh, inscribed angle because the vertex is on the circle. The inscribed angle is 38 degrees. So what is the measure of this intercepted arc? Well, the inscribed angle is half of the measure of the intercepted arc. So therefore, if I have the inscribed angle and to go back the other way, instead of multiplying by one half, I multiply by two. And that, so two times 38 will be the measure of this intercepted arc. And here, they're asking for the measure of this angle. Whoa, what's going on here? And they're telling us that the measure of this angle, angle Y here, is 72 degrees. What kind of an angle is that? It's an inscribed angle. 
and because the vertex is on the circle and it's coming out and it's creating this intercepted arc. Hmm. Hey, notice that this other angle that they want us to find the measure of is also an inscribed angle and also has the same intercepted arc. So I will let you figure out what the measure of that angle is. On the back side of those notes that you have there, let's look at polygons. Let's look at inscribed polygons. So here's a polygon, here's a triangle, here's another polygon, a quadrilateral, and these are special kind of polygons because they are inscribed polygons. What does inscribed mean? It means that all of its vertices lie on the circle. So here's the the vertices of this triangle and notice that each of these are on this particular circle and same thing here each of these are on that particular circle so this is an inscribed triangle it is a triangle that is inscribed within this circle and this circle circumscribes circumscribes this triangle here we're given a theorem that if a right triangle is inscribed, we know what inscribed means. It means all the vertices are on the circle. So here is a triangle and each of these vertices are on the circle. And uniquely, this is a right triangle. So this angle here is 90 degrees. Hey, and this angle would be a inscribed angle. In fact, each of these, right? Each of these are inscribed angle. But let's look at this one in particular. This is an inscribed angle that comes out and captures this part of the circle. So this is the intercepted arc. If I could do that. Do I have blue, 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 blue. Here it is. Here is the intercepted arc of that right angle. Of course, right angle, you know that's 90 degrees. And what do we say about the relationship between a intercepted arc and it's inscribed angle. Well, the inscribed angle is half of the measure of the intercepted arc. Hmm. So if we could figure out what the, well, oh, actually, no, no. <laughs> I was going to go back this way, but um, let's do it the other way. So let's do the converse. So we do know that the measure of this inscribed angle is 90 degrees. So therefore, to find the measure of its intercepted arc, we multiply 90 times two, and that gives us 180 degrees. That's interesting. Hey, 180, that's half of 360. So this must be a semicircle. The measure of this intercepted arc is a semicircle, it's 180 degrees, and therefore this is a semicircle. And therefore, this chord, that goes from circle to circle must be a diameter. So in this case, they gave us this little dot here uh, referring to the center of circle D. But even if they had not, pretend that they did not give us that point and we did not know that was a circle, we would know any time that you have an inscribed angle that is 90 degrees, then your intercepted arc will always be 180 degrees and a chord that goes from those two points on your circle will be a diameter that goes through the center. Does that about explain it? I think it does. Yep. So this is a this is a diameter if and only if it is created by an inscribed angle that is a right angle. So sometimes they will tell you that it is a diameter and you know for sure then that this inscribed angle will be 90 degrees or other times they'll tell you that the inscribed angle is 90 degrees and you know for sure that it is creating a semicircle and a diameter. Another very useful theorem for us talking about inscribed polygons is that when we have a quadrilateral that is inscribed, so each of these vertices are on the circle, it will always be that opposite angles, opposite angles will be supplementary. Now we do know that in, a, in any quadrilateral, 
the sum of the interior angles of any quadrilateral will always be 360. Remember that uh, we said n minus 2 times 180. And so if you plugged in 4 for the number of sides, 4 minus 2 is 2. 2 times 180 is 360. So we do know the sum of any quadrilateral is 360. But uniquely, when the quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, uh, the opposite angles will always be supplementary. And you, of course, remember that means the sum of these opposite angles is 180 degrees. So, for example, when we come to this problem, and we're looking at this thing here, and count up the number of sides. Well, first of all, notice that each of these vertices are on the circle. So this polygon is being inscribed by the circle. And also notice I have one, two, three, four sides. So this is an inscribed quadrilateral. And from this theorem, we know that opposite angles in a, qua in a inscribed quadrilateral will always be supplementary. So this pair of angles are supplementary. So we could say y plus 68 equals 180. And then solve that for y. And then we can do the same thing here that these two opposite angles are also supplementary. So x plus 82 equals 180 degrees. And then same thing over here. It's another quadrilateral that's inscribed in the circle. And so I'll let you create your equations between opposite angles and then solve it for the, the variable that they're wanting. Okay, hope that was helpful. And I look forward to seeing you in class, and may the Lord bless you.